First of all, I'd like to thank Commissioner Fernandez. He's done a, a great job in recognizing our, our rich history here in Union City. And this is one more example. I mean, the embroidery played a major, major role in Union City. I knew over the years family members, close friends, and community members who were very active in the embroidery. In fact, the embroidery was a, a big attraction to many immigrants who called Union City home. So it's great that we recognize it and remember it here in Union City and make it a part of our our everyday lives today to let people know why we became so strong as a community, why it's so strong in our, our rich history of Union City. So it's a wonderful day once again to celebrate our community and also to have another spot where people can come and sit and relax and enjoy the rich history that we have. For many decades, from the late 19th century to the last decades of the 20th century, the embroidery and lace manufacturing industry was the dominant business of Union City and North Hudson County. Although all but gone from Union City, the impact that the embroidery industry had on the development of the city is now forgotten. A banner stretches across an overpass in Union City above the New Jersey 495 roadway. It proclaims, Union City, the home of the American embroidery industry. The Shifley embroidery symbol is featured on the Union City seal adopted in 1975. May 30th, 2014 saw the dedication of Embroidery Plaza on New York Avenue and 30th Street in Union City. Embroidery businesses had existed in West Hoboken and Union Hill since the 1860s, run by skilled Swiss, German, Italian, and French artisans. Embroidery at the time, the mid-19th century, was all done by hand or manually operated machines. It was in the early 1870s when Isaac Grobley of Switzerland invented the first practical Shifley embroidery machine. This machine was based on the principles of the newly invented sewing machine. Grobley's machine utilized a combination of a continuously threaded needle and shuttle containing a bobbin of thread. The shuttle itself looked similar to the hull of a sailboat. Schiffle means little boat in the Swiss dialect of the German language, so his machine came to be known as the Schiffle machine. The machine, powered by electricity, allowed for the mass production of fine embroidery silks. Dr. Robert Reiner of Weehawken, a German immigrant who came to America in 1903, was the person most responsible for bringing the Schiffle embroidery industry to Union City. He realized the potential for embroidery and became the American agent of a German company that manufactured Schiffle machines then began the mass importation of embroidery machines to northern New Jersey. Hundreds of Austrian, Swiss, and German immigrants, many in West Hoboken and Union Hill, became the manufacturers of Schiffle embroidery. Many of the names of the silk mills still hold a familiar ring. The Schwarzenbach Hubber & Company Silk Mills, Givernard Brothers Silk Mills, the Polish Silk Mills, and the R&H Simon Silk Mills. From West Hoboken to Union Hill, these and many other silk mills brought employment and prosperity to early Union City. Many other factors contributed that made Union City the ideal place for the embroidery industry. First was the location directly across the Hudson River from New York City and its government district. Second was the solid bedrock of the Palisades to which the 5-ton to 8-ton machines were anchored by 20-foot shafts in order to keep the needles from vibrating. Third, the bustling shipping ports and railroads on both sides of the Hudson River that until 1950s were the main ways to transport goods across the country and overseas. Fourth was the large labor force of skilled and unskilled workers employed by the silk mills. Whether employed in one of the area's silk mills or doing piecework for the mills at home, the embroidery industry employed thousands of people, many of them first-generation immigrants. Union City was built on embroidery. Uh, over 100 years, it was considered the embroidery capital of the world. And me being a Cuban-American born in Cuba, coming here in the early 70s, my mom, the very next day after she came from Cuba, she started working in a factory here in Union City. So I'm very proud today to be uh, celebrating, celebrating the very many people that, that went through here. Most of the people who immigrated uh, from uh, Germany, Switzerland, 
Austria. They were all skilled in that art. And they all came here, settled here, got the machinery, which came from overseas, and uh, they all just started the embroidery industry here. This was the embroidery capital of the world at one time. I think ultimately the enduring fabric um, is the legacy of uh, who we are today because the threads that make the fabric of Union City are the thread of the Italian, the German, the Swiss, the French. Uh, these threads brought their culture, their, their music, their poetry, and it came together in such a beautiful way and it's still that way in Union City today. From the early German and Swiss immigrants of the late 1800s to the Italian immigrants of the early 1900s and the Cuban immigrants fleeing the oppressive regime of communist Cuba in the 1960s and 1970s, they all found employment in the silk mills of Union City, giving them the opportunity to succeed in America. Perhaps the most enduring legacy to the embroidery industry in Union City was seen at the dedication of Embroidery Plaza. Many of those in attendance were the children and grandchildren of those first-generation immigrants, most of them leading successful lives as doctors, lawyers, educators, and artists. They stood there in the sunset with smiles on their faces, remembering their immigrant ancestors and the opportunity that was given to them by the silk embroidery industry in Union City. So I thank all those that participated today. I think it's so important. And not only to have this here today, but to continue improving our community yet keeping our, our past part of what we're trying to do.